Good morning and welcome to the OSWA webinar, So Many Stormwater BMP Resources, presented by John Pryor from the Ohio Department of Transportation. My name is Kelsey Richards. I am the Marketing Committee Chair for OSWA and I'll be moderating today's webinar. Ohio Stormwater Association is a nonprofit and non-political organization that is dedicated to advancing the management of stormwater and related natural resources through education, leadership, watershed-based coordination, and technical assistance in Ohio. OSWA Board of Directors include Kelly Kubander as President, Regina Collins as Vice President, Teresa McGeady as a Secretary, Bob Lentz as a treasurer, and Mark McCabe as the past president. Also listed is the rest of the OSWA board. Water Management Association of Ohio, or WAMO, is OSWA's parent organization. So in order to join OSWA, you must first become a member of WAMO, then select Ohio Stormwater Association as your division. Some benefits of joining OSWA include free quarterly stormwater webinars, discounted registration at the annual MS4 bootcamp training in May, discounted registration at the annual watershed workshop presented in collaboration with the Ohio Water Environment Association, and discounts on online training provided by Stormwater University, National Stormwater Center, and American Stormwater Institute. For more information about OSWA member benefits, you can go to our website, Ohio, SWA.com. OSWA has six committees anyone can join, education, marketing and membership, regulatory, transportation, industrial, and extreme weather. You do not need to be a member to join a committee. You can find additional information about OSWA's committees on our website, again, OhioSWA.com. If you need CEUs or PDHs, you will need to complete the survey using the link provided in the chat and fill out the attendance verification form. And we'll also have questions throughout the webinar that you can answer. Again, everything will be in the chat for you for the link. Today's speaker is John Pryor from the Ohio Department of Transportation. Please use the chat to ask any questions, which they will be addressed at the end of the presentation. So now we'll have so many stormwater BMP resources presented by John Pryor. Hey, everybody. Yeah, let me share my screen real quick. All right, hopefully pretty soon people are seeing some ODOT generic template screen. Anyone, can anyone give me a confirmation that they're seeing that? Yes. Before I start. Good. There you go. Hate to present for like 45 minutes to a blank screen and no one tells me. Thank you. All right, so I'm John Pryor from ODOT. I'm looking through the attendee list. All 60 of us, thank you for coming. Um, it looks like I know a lot of the names, so I've spoken with a lot of you before. So this is, this is, um, <clears throat> this presentation is about uh, generally post-construction stormwater BMPs. We have lots of resources, but we're talking about stormwater BMP resources and it's exciting because there's an exclamation point at the end. So, so many BMP resources. So there's not a whole lot of brand new information, but some of it might be new to you because there's a lot of information here uh, that we at the association want to make sure everyone has access to. We have some tools at the association that might be useful. So useful to the attendees. So we'll get right into this. Uh, I know it's always hard. I always like it live when people can just ask questions whenever, but I'll, I'll get right into this. So we're going to talk about, when I say resources, I'm going to kind of subdivide it into these five categories. Um, Post-construction BMP planning, design review at a high level, detailed design, BMP maintenance and BMP research. And really when, I, when we separate it out like this, we're really thinking about the different types of people that might wanna use these resources. So do you have a new engineer, a new designer who needs to be trained up, who, who you know, went to school for civil engineering, is doing design and has to get better acclimated with Ohio stormwater BMPs. Maybe that would be you know, high level or into detailed design? Do you have someone at, the, at your city that is reviewing post-construction BMPs? Uh, maybe they just need to look at this, some of this high level design. Or do you have someone who is just thinking about, you know, big, big, picture, big picture planning? And that's where you look into some of these BMP planning resources, your maintenance department or the people in charge of 
planning or budgeting for maintenance activities. Some of our maintenance uh, resources can be helpful. And then if you want to get into the weeds on some of the fun stuff, some of the you know, nutrients or climate change or flooding, or we have lots of BMP research that's available um, from this web, this website. So this is, I'm sure all of us attend or log on to the Ohio Stormwater Association website daily for our various stormwater needs. But just in case you don't, that it looks like this when you log on. You can Google in Ohio Stormwater Association. It pops right up. You know, it's got these these tabs. But the tab on the right, this library tab, which is highlighted in red. And just for everyone's information, you can type this in on your other screen if you want to play while I'm talking. It's just ohioswa.com, or you can Google Ohio Stormwater Association. You can actually play. Uh, everything I'm talking about today is in this library. Um, so if you want to play in there while while I'm talking, be welcome to. So anyway, if you click on that library tab, um, you'll come to this screen, which has a bunch of links on the left side for a bunch of our partners. But on the right side is this library. And these folders are not perfect because it cuts off part of their name because we're not web designers and we do the best we can. But there's a bunch of folders in each of these um, and a bunch of files in, in each of these folders. And these folders are generally split up by... So m most of the people who come and talk to us, a lot of people are associated with are, are interested in complying with either the construction general permit or the small MS4 permit. So these library folders are split up into MCM three, four, five, five, and uh, that's all we have right now. We don't have any resources for MCM one and two and six. Uh, we might in the future, but right now it's um, three IDDE construction BMPs, um, BMP maintenance, which is what's cut off there in post construction. And then we also have tabs for or folders for national research, Ohio-based research, presentation, regulations, TMDL information. So, um, and in general, just just as a big picture, how this is all organized, I'm going to go just a little bit of how our library is organized because it will help you read this later. Every single one of our files follows the same naming uh, configuration convention, where you have a description of the resource, the source of it, so who who the author is, and the year it was published. So like if it's ODOT's post-construction BMP calculation spreadsheets, it'll say ODOT BMP calc spreadsheet from ODOT, and it was done in 2009. If it's a runoff reduction method uh, presentation from someone at OSU, it'd be runoff reduction method for water quality presentation, OSU 2018. So it's a little tricky because a lot of these resources maybe could fit in like a presentation folder or a post-construction folder. Um, so we did the best I can, or we did with the best we could, but the whole library is basically split up into, into these different folders that have these types of resources. And you don't have to go, you don't have to look at that in too much detail. You can play on your own in the library. But um, we have about 140 individual documents, CAD drawings, presentations, um, PDFs, reports, all that type of stuff. Um, and the, the purpose of this, when we, when we developed this library a while ago, and it's been up for two, three years now, the purpose of this was to develop resources specific to Ohio. It's not, they're not all from Ohio, but they're the resources most useful for Ohio. Because if you Google stormwater BMPs, you're going to get a lot of stuff from California and a lot of stuff from Wisconsin, a lot of stuff from, from Chesapeake Bay area. And some of the requirements they have in those other places are can really lead you down a rabbit hole if you're not sure where you're looking. So we have, we have chosen these resources to try to be as useful as possible to Ohio, Ohio permittees. And to, despite the fact that we have 140 or so documents, you know, really reduce the clutter. So you're kind of looking at, you know, four or five different resources for what you might want to look for. So We'll get rid of stuff that we think is outdated or if there's a better resources that contains all that previous information. Um, so we, we, we kind of, we, we control this library to, to try to give you the best thing you can get. So first I'm going to go into, so remember I had those five categories. So this is just kind of how the library is set up. And again, if you're on, I'm scrolling backwards. If you're on OhioStormWaterAssociation.com, you can play in this library while I'm talking, but I'm, I'm going to get into the, the, those kind of five categories of topics, depending on what information you're most interested in. And some of this is going to be obvious to people who are into post-construction BMPs. And some of this might be something like I have a new engineer or I have a city planner that I just want to get up to speed on some stuff. 
what do I have? How do I not recreate the wheel? And, that, and that's what we're trying to do here. So the first thing is BMP planning we'll talk about. So I, I'm highlighting throughout this presentation 20, 15, 20 resources that we have that you may have been presented, you may have been informed about five to one years ago, depending on when these things came out. Um, I'm just bringing back up that they exist all in one place and what they are good for and, and how you might be able to use them. So we have this BMP selection tool that was done through a ODOT funded research project back in 2015. And it's under the library, Ohio Research. It's called um, Selection Tool and Report. There's an Excel document and a report. It's, it's easy to find. But this, this was done for local roadways. And a lot of these are done, are, a lot of these resources are from ODOT because we spend a lot of money on this type of stuff. And I guess since I work for ODOT, it's easy for me to know what the latest and greatest is for all this stuff. But we have things from other sources too. Anyway, this specific tool, this report and Excel uh, worksheet, Excel tool, uh, allows you to look at the whole world of post-construction BMPs and plug in some relatively simple information to quickly figure out out of all 23 BMPs that exist on earth, you know, what are the ones that might be most appropriate for my site? And it, and it talks about, you know, what design methodology are you using? Are you looking at, is it transportation? Is it normal ODOT or Ohio EPA site developments? Are there specific functions you require, nutrient reduction or volume reduction? And then it gets into like another screened level of, you know, what's, what are my design constraints? Do I have any safety constraints? And then this kind of finishing step is, do I have any uh, maintenance limitations? You know, can I not use a vac truck? Do I need it to be a certain type of maintenance? And do I have any aesthetic preferences? And, and this is kind of, I know, depending on this, your size of screen, this text is pretty small. But basically, it lists every single BMP and goes through each phase, screening phase one, two, and three, and progressively screens out more and more BMPs. So for this specific example, the only thing that wasn't screened out by phase three uh, screening was a dry extended detention basin that made it all the way through for whatever reason. And then it gives you more information. This is a zoom in of the top of the screen, but it, it tells you the same thing. It gives you more information about the general level of effort for operation and maintaining, maintaining that BMP and the general capital cost. And these high, medium, low, and you know $1 sign to $4 signs are defined in the report and in this spreadsheet. So you can see exactly you know, what if you go this way, what are you buying? Um, and in the same report, this and I'm only on the first of, of these so many BMP resources, there's, it, there's information on all these. And these are from 2015, but these are still pretty going to be pretty good about the general capital cost in terms of acres treated and specifically where we got those numbers from. Um, so, you know, if a vegetative biofilter costs somewhere around, somewhere less than you know, $16,000 per acre treated, you know, where'd we get that information from? And, and you can see exactly, you know, does your site, if you want to get into the weeds of what, of what the cost might be, you can look at where we got this data from where in, in this report and show and see, you know, does my site match what their assumptions are and, and get into the weeds. So you can use it as a real high level saying, you know, detention based, dry extended detention basins are 10 to 20, you, know, you could pick $15,000 per acre treated or something and, and just use that as a high level planning, or you can get in the weeds to try to really get at the, the, uh, some cost assumptions for your specific site. But there's a lot of good information here that can be used for planning um, at a high level. And this same study has seven different case studies, Ohio specific case studies of post-construction BMPs and information about where they are, what they treat, their specific cost, who owned and designed them. Um, these, these fact sheets. So it's not just, it's not just all theoretical. It's a, it's a lot of, you know, what's in the ground now and how much did it cost. And the same report has a list of the 20 best, this is a subset of them, but the 15, 20 best other reports that um, have the best information for design, selection, cost, maintenance, performance, and safety of BMPs. So you can go all the way back to old reports, old meaning 2006 or 2011 or 2014, these reports that have really great information. Some of these reports are also in our, in our library in other places, but if you really want to get into the weeds of, you know, what's the safest BMP or, 
where's the best information for designing something? You know, if you're looking outside of ODOT or for the nationally based information, it's all here. So post-construction BMPs can kind of seem like wishy-washy. There's water going in, it's magically getting treated and going out. That's not true. It's, it's, there's a relatively limited list of BMPs. You know, you can, you can know all 24 of them of the types of BMP treatment and then kind of figure out what, what world you live in. So it, it kind of demystifies all of these and kind of can get you right to where you want to go from a high level planning standpoint. We have presentations. So uh, I've given post-construction stormwater BMP presentations through ODOT for many years, and they're all, uh, all the most relevant ones are available on ODOT's website. And we've put, put a lot of them on, most of them on the Ohio Stormwater Association library. So some of these are, PowerPoint files, some of these are PDFs, but they have really high, you know, if we're getting into planning, some of them, there's really good information. If you're on a, on a transportation project, you can look at your site for about five minutes and 10 minutes maybe, and figure out about what world of post-construction BMPs you're gonna live in. And we do this at ODOT all the time because we have to kind of half plan out our post-construction BMPs when we're finalizing right-of-way acquisition or, you know, really scoping out the project. So. So you can do high level scoping of what kind of BMP you're looking at on a transportation project really early. And there's presentations on the library on, on how to do that. Same thing, this is, this is one of the reports in our, you'd get to it by clicking on the library and going to the national research uh, folder. <clears throat> there's this NCHRP, which is a national cooperative highway research program. So a lot of research dollars through federal highways uh, go into these, but in 2015, this long-term performance and cost of BMPs, this report 792, is still pretty much the latest and greatest information for not just highway or roadway BMPs, but all BMPs about life cycle cost, pollutant removal efficiency, maintenance effort, case studies. So if you're trying to plan out, I mean, this can get well into the weeds. This could be anyway from, you know, high-level BMP planning to, to um, you know, detailed design or even research. Uh, but there's some tables in here that can tell you right where you're looking for. So if you're looking for pollutant removal, if you're looking for nutrient removal or phosphorus removal specifically in the Maumee or, or something, you know, there's these reports that are really pretty easy. You just Google Ohio Stormwater Association, click library, click, click national resource, national research, open this up and, and then you're right there and there's tables. And granted, these reports might be a hundred pages, but they're, they're not that cumbersome. Um, so that's BMP planning at a high level. Uh, I guess it's 11, 19, maybe we'll stop for, are, are we supposed to <laughs> plug in to make sure everyone's paying attention, uh, link? Sure, John, if you wanna just give a general question and then uh, the link's been put into the chat, people can answer on the screen. Okay, so my first question is on the Ohio Stormwater website library, are there a lot of resources, like so many resources or almost no resources? Type in your answer, you can type whatever you want. But there are a lot of resources. Okay, um, so I'll give you guys a second to type that in because I know that'll help with PDHs. But after you type in a lot of resources or so many resources with an exclamation point, we'll get into the next kind of level is this high level planning. So this would be like all the folks that, that either maybe are gonna be reviewing plans with post-construction BMPs or your designers who aren't doing the design of the post-construction BMPs, but need to provide some level of review. You know, how do you how do you inform them? How do you easily give them something that says, here, take a look at this, and then you'll get a better idea of what we're dealing with. So there's lots of information here. You can do there's ODOTs in the under the presentations tab of the library, there's um, these preliminary calculations presentations where it goes through the highest level. Of, of information, you know, the preliminary calculations of the design aids, this, this kind of, before you get into the weeds, how you look at these post-construction BMPs, um, you can get into the weeds with any of these presentations that ODOT has. ODOT actually has a design and review process presentation kind of going through how best to review post-construction BMPs. Now that's ODOT specific, but it's very usable to anyone doing any kind of BMPs. Um, we have Ohio EPA's BMP compliance worksheets up there. We have uh, design examples. We have um, uh, these post-construction BMP review checklists. So lots of resources that you don't have to get all the way into the weeds, but if you want to know, 
put something in front of someone and say, hey, make sure these 12 things are in line or look at these things. You know, it's, it's a little bit less vague or a little bit less um, ominous that to just say, hey, do this specific thing as opposed to all of a sudden understand BMPs even though you don't know what these are. So this is something that's in one of the ODOT presentations. And I, again, I know the text is small, but a lot of times as reviewers at a high level, you might get, re, you might get uh, research or uh, calculations from a consultant, let's say, or a designer in some software. And you may not know what that software is, or you may not be experienced. I know here at ODOT, anything that comes through, even HydroCAD or really any of the stormwater software generally comes through me at ODOTS, you know, and we have a lot of designers um, who don't play in all these. But if you get something, this is just one of the resources in one of our presentations, you can pretty quickly use that to say like, where on the continuum of, of difficulty, of complexity am I? So there's all these different common software that, that are used, HY8, HydroFlow, PECRAS, you know, the HydroCAD, Hydro... Bentley Stormcad, Bentley Pond Pack, and then these really detailed ones like EPA Swim, PC Swim, Autodesk SSA, Bentley Civil Storm, XP Swim. So the different consultants and some of the some of the maybe DOT or some of us at ODOT and maybe some of the locals might use these different uh, modeling platforms. But you can pretty quickly say if I get some like if I get Bentley Flowmaster and and Bentley Civil Storm, and I don't know what I'm talking about. Those both sound scary to me. Bentley Civil Storm is scary. That has a lot of complexity and you need to know what you're doing. Bentley Flowmaster is a lot less scary. That's plugging in calculations and kind of doing simple hydraulics. So it's just pointing out that some of these resources on our library, if you're confused about anything at a high level review standpoint, you can get in there and, and do some, and be at least aware that there's some resources to help you get through your review. This is something that uh, we snuck on here. It's public, so it's allowed. I don't know who from Ohio EPA is on this list, on this call right now, but ODNR used to have these uh, design examples from 2015 um, when the rainwater and, and land development manual lived at the Department of Natural Resources. So once that moved over to Ohio EPA and Ohio EPA took control of that, that was great. But back in the 2018 construction general permit update, the precipitation volume went from, you know, there are a bunch of changes. The big one being the precipitation volume went from 0.75 to 0.9 inches. So all of these design examples became no longer completely accurate. But they haven't been replaced on Ohio EPA's website yet. So um, this Ohio Stormwater Association has the old, old um, examples, which are no longer available on DNR or Ohio EPA's website. Now, these are all used at your own risk. We're not, you know, we tell you where they're from and, and the date, but a lot, there's a lot of good information still here that it's difficult for um, entities like Ohio EPA to, to host these resources when they're not 100% accurate when the water quality volume calculations have been updated for the new permit or for the 2018 permit. The association can put whatever resources we think are most appropriate up there. So if, you're, if you use some of these back in 2015, 2016, 2017, they're available again to you if you know where to look for them and they're on our website. Now, the, you'll have to update the math for the new permit, but you can at least see uh, how ODNR and Ohio EPA did these, these uh, stormwater BMP designs before at a high level, okay? So you can get into the details or look at it in a high level, but it's a resource that, it's, it's, the, it's one of the benefits of the Ohio Stormwater Association because since we're not, since we don't own a permit, since we're not owning regulations, we can just put up resources that we think are most valuable. So we're, we're less constrained than maybe Ohio EPA or a city or even ODOT is in, in putting information, making information available that we think is most helpful to permanent entities. Uh, I know, that again, the text is kind of small. I'm just kind of showing screenshots here, but we have these post, ODOT has put together these post-construction BMP review checklists that we use internally and then made public because we're a public entity. So when ODOT reviews post-construction BMPs for someone who didn't design it, we make sure you fill in all these little boxes. We make, we check, do we have figures for all these things? Do we have numbers for these things? Do we have values? Do these values make sense? You know, did they consider anti-seep collars, blah, 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 all this stuff. So again, this is transportation specific, but extremely usable for um, 
for any entity looking at post-construction BMPs, you might add or remove something based on your, your local requirements. But, uh, you know, you really don't have to re reinvent the wheel. You can get about 90% of the way where you want to go from using some of the stuff that's publicly available at a high level. So that was a uh, high level. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get into some of our detailed design. So for those engineers that are diving into actually putting, putting post-construction BMPs on plans, you know, what kind of resources do we have? So we have, we have lots. So ODOT has put um, a lot of our, so most of ODOT's resources that are on the library, a lot of them are on our ODOT's website also, but we have under library 05 post-construction BMP design and then post-construction BMP design examples. These are generally what designers want is how did people do it before? And we have PDFs of laying out the process and CAD drawings and CAD and PDFs of sample plan notes, design notes. So basically all the stuff you'd look for if you were starting, if you're doing a new BMP, you'd look to your boss or the previous project and say, how do we do it on that last project? If you don't have that, you can look to ODOT or DNR um, and look to some of these design examples that are up there. Uh, this is a cross section of a detention basin that shows the different parts and, and how, it, how it showed up on, in a specific CAD in, um, it, for an ODOT detention basin, extended dry, dry basin. And again, the, we have PDFs and the CAD there, so it, it makes it easier for you. And the report shows through exactly how we you know, showed the minimum, how we demonstrated compliance with the CGP or ODOT's requirements and how we showed, you know, the outlet structure and everything. And we have the same types of things for detention basins. We have it for bioretention cells. You can go and uh, pull this figure in CAD if you want to use it as your cross-section, right? It's nothing magic. It's just available to the public. And it's what ODOT would use on, on a cross-section of a, of a, uh, bioretention cell of which we're putting in a lot. So, and, and you can tweak it if your design, your standard design has different depths or different um, aggregate quantity or type, you know, obviously we're referencing our uh, ODOT specifications, but you can look at reference, whatever you want, but it, it gets you a lot of the way there without, without reinventing anything. So hopefully if you've done, if you're into post-construction BMPs and you have other resources, you're already doing this, but if you're, if you're new to it or coming in or want to check, there's a lot of detailed design resources there. You know, this is ODOT spire retention planting mix. And we have this note is only a small section of a, the note, which says how the contractor is supposed to put it in, the things we check for, you know, like little things like place the bioretention retention planting so on 12 inch lifts and then, you know, cover with water to compact it so you're not rolling it. You know, things that ODOT and Ohio EPA and ODNR have thought through um, some of these things. So this is all available on the website, on the Ohio Stormwater Association website in the under library, post-construction BMP design and example BMP details. Also, if you wanna get creative and get outside of Ohio, there's, there's a few other resources up there that the uh, Philadelphia, city of Philadelphia did a Green Streets uh, big workup a few years ago. And we put all their PDFs and CAD up there too. It, it gives more of an urban design. Um, now, we, we're not gonna make any promises that what city of Philadelphia does is matching the specific uh, Ohio specific requirements, but it does provide a lot. There are a lot of details in there for curb cuts, you know, aggregate under drains, all the little fine details that you may not have at a local level that you might want to steal or use borrow from someone else who's already done it, some other public entity. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of CAD and PDFs up there for both the detailed design, which is sometimes where you can spend some time, uh, you know, really spinning your wheel. And then also some of the notes, you know, you can look through what, what is Philadelphia doing as far as their notes. And you don't have to use any of these. They're just available. So you don't have to re recreate anything from, from reports or from the permit or anything. There's just a lot of the latest and greatest up here. And then also ODOT has our, our presentations that we've done for how to design DOT specific uh, or transportation specific post-construction BMPs. So vegetative field strips, vegetative biofilters, manufactured systems, which are hydrodynamic separators, detention basins, bioretention cells. So we have PDFs or PowerPoints that go through exactly each of these, the design process, you know, how to figure out what your treatment goals are, where to cite them, sizing them, pre-treatment, overflow, other considerations. And we use this to train up BMP designers at ODOT um, 
So it's all publicly available and it's the same type of stuff I've given day long uh, classes on previous. But if you want to just get into it without listening to me talk or just get into it for you know 40 minutes at a time or whatever you're looking at, it's all, it's all available. Most of this is available on ODOT's website and the Ohio Stormwater Association, but the association has you know a bigger bigger compilation of resources than ODOT, obviously. And it can get really into the, the, into the weeds and help one in visualizing how some of these things are designed. So it's not just the text of the, of the manuals or the, or the specifications. It, it gets into, you know, here's a real road with a real cross section that we really designed. And this is how the bioretention cell fit in. And this is how the different pieces fit in, how we put the overflow weir, the dike here in this situation, how much water it ponded up, how we did the calculations, all this stuff. So this is in the presentations and it's the same type of stuff we go to, to make people aware of, you know, if you're really getting into the weeds of how to design these post-construction BMPs, you know, you need to know all this stuff. Uh, so let's, let's take a pause now and fill it. Let me come up with another question. So, um, uh, here, let me go back and key this up. So if I wanted, uh, example, details from a post-construction BMP, what website could I use to find example details? Like what, what resource might be available to look at example B, post-construction BMP details, um, especially associated with the Ohio Stormwater Association? So give everyone a second to type in for your PDHs. You don't have to type in the whole thing, just the library has resources for example, post-construction BMP details. So if you type in Ohio Stormwater Association Library, you'll get there, but give everyone a chance to type in before I get in maintenance, which I'm excited about maintenance. I mean, I'm excited about all this stuff. Obviously it's post-construction BMPs. It's my world. It's what I do with, what I deal with, but there's some new stuff in maintenance that it's not that new, like it's been around for a year, but I don't think people are utilizing it like they could. So hopefully this will help out with that. So we've pulled lots of BMP maintenance information. We've, I, I'm sure there are some folks from Franklin County or Cuyahoga, um, and we've taken publicly owned things. Some people I've talked to, any any of the private, any of the the uh, privately presented or, or or given presentations, I've gotten permission. Uh, public websites. A lot of times I'll talk to folks, but if it's public, especially if it's a city or government website, it's all pretty much publicly available. So we've taken the latest and greatest on this stuff. We have the Northeast Ohio Stormwater Training Council um, BMP uh, manual that's up. And I know their website isn't as supported as it used to be. So some of their stuff that was on their website that you might've gone to, maybe check out our website. And a lot of it's there. Um, we have resources from all this on, on library 05 maintenance and then BMP maintenance guidance if you look in there. But I'm gonna get into this new thing that ODOT has done. So ODOT developed these three BMP training modules to help ODOT's uh, transportation, post-construction BMP inspection maintenance. And, and we know that for post-construction BMPs, um, different entities have different uh, levels of involvement. I, they're, they're kind of, sometimes they're a little more hidden than the big detention basins behind the Walmart. Um, and sometimes it's harder to keep track of them. So, you know, ODOT owns like two and a half thousand of these. So we have a pretty big effort into inspecting and maintaining these roadway BMPs, but a lot of our BMPs look like regular site BMPs like biotension cells and detention basins and hydrodynamic separators and all that stuff. So we have these three training modules, which are video, um, uh, on-demand, self-paced. You, you hit the next button, you go to the next slide, and, and each one takes about an hour to complete. It's on, um, one's on kind of an introduction of post-construction BMPs and why they need to be maintained, kind of the uh, inspected and maintained, kind of the, the regulations. And then the second one is on mostly on inspecting and, and figuring out if there's any issues with your post-construction BMPs. And the third one's really on maintenance and, and environmental considerations associated with maintenance of post-construction BMPs. And it is very transportation, it's ODOT specific, but I mean, we, we paid for it and built it, um, but it's very usable and we made it publicly available. 
I can see if I check how many people have used it and no one has used it outside of ODOT, pretty much no one, because it's wildly difficult to get to. So we've made it easier, but I want to show you what it is, you know, kind of wet your whistle on getting in on spending an hour looking at some of these fancy photos and then show you exactly how to get there. And all this information is on the association website. So these training slides, these three modules are not on the website. They are hosted in, in Ohio's, Ohio citizens, uh, uh, public resources website. Okay. And because government is what it is, um, it, it takes a while to get to it, but I want to show you what these are, make you interested in, in giving them or giving them to your, to your staff or the people you work with as an easy resource. You just have to spend about 10 minutes getting to it. It's unfortunately not an easy link, but once you get to it, it's, it's great. You have access to basically the latest and greatest on BMP inspection and maintenance training. So the first module talks about, you know, the different types of BMPs, you know, understanding what they do and understanding Ohio EPA's permit requirements, um, which is pretty applicable to everyone, not just ODOT. It's got these animations. So if you've been to one of my BMP uh, days in the past, I have these corny PowerPoint animations that I do sometimes explain how they work. Anyway, they've been cleaned up a little bit and look a little nicer and in the, in the, on-demand training, this actually moves and there's arrows and things moving, but can't do this on the slide. Anyway, it, uh, I could, it would take up a lot of data and could mess up, but this is, you get the idea. There's, there's animations on each of these types of BMPs and showing exactly how they work. That was a detention basin or a retention basin. This is a bioretention cell, um, you know, a roadway bioretention cell, but it's effectively the same thing for site development. So you can see exactly what's going on and really kind of get into it. Um, this is in the second module, the inspection. This is something I'm, we're pretty proud of. It, it shows a generic animation of a detention basin, but it shows the, the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven different spots that we inspect in our standard inspections of these things. And you can, it's interactive. So you click on one of these, you click on the lightning bolt, which is like erosion for check. One of the things we check is check erosion, rust and gullies, and it'll actually take you to a photo of a real detention basin in the field with erosion ruts and gullies so you can see exactly what it looks like. So you can see this is a detention basin, there's rills coming down and it tells you exactly what the inspection item is. And for us at ODOT, it says generally what the maintenance activities are. So this is very valuable. We have, we've been doing post-construction, just like a lot of people have, we've been doing post-construction BMPs, inspections and maintenance for a long time. We have thousands of photographs. So we took the best, most useful ones and we have a lot of new people doing this all the time at ODOT. So if you want to know what we're talking about when we say erosion, this is what we're talking about. You can see a photo of exactly what it is. You can see how it kind of ties into this detention basin and, and why we care about it and what it looks like. Module three has you know, common maintenance problems and the maintenance activities associated with them and then environmental considerations. And this is really great too. You can look at, this is, these are common maintenance issues for a, a vegetated biofilter you don't have to worry too much about it, but if you click on one of those, it'll tell you, like this is a, it, it'll tell you exactly what to look for. And, and on here, there's these are all interactive. You click on the photo, and you see before and after maintenance. So if I go to erosion next to a detention base, you can see on the left side water was coming off the the parking lot and it, making rills and eroding. And they had put down rock there, but it, it wasn't fixed. But after they cleaned it up and put rock and gave a, you know, uneroding path for the water to get off the parking lot into this detention base and that's what it looked like so so everyone else doing this everyone else who has this problem in the future can look at this train real quick and say okay that's how they fixed it and we do that for all the common common maintenance issues that we have you know for unclogging a detention basin outlet for put getting grass real places all that stuff um so lots of good lots of good photos lots of good interactive we do make it so you can't click through really quick so if you're really looking for to zoom through it, it, it is tough. You, I think the quickest you can do it is like a half an hour because a lot of the voiceover has to like go through its process. But it's because it's a training because we actually train people up and and how to get good at that. Okay, so those resources, those three modules are great. Unfortunately, the way to make them public is by using ODOT's Citizen Learn portal, which none of you have probably ever been on, or Ohio, not ODOT's, Ohio Learn. Um, it is a It is a process, but you can do it. And you can do it without any help from anybody except this 
uh, piece of paper, this PDF. So under library um, 05 maintenance, uh, there's this document called Ac Accessing ODOT's BMP Inspection and Maintenance Training ODOT 2023, because we just created it. And it gives the 28 step process, 28 steps to get to this online training. Once you get there, it's great. You can click through it, but you, you got to create a membership, like create a user ID for o Ohio Learn and then get the Ohio Learn little app on your computer and then get the ODOT Learn and then find the ODOT citizen training folder and then enroll in this training and then uh, actually uh, take it. So it's, I apologize that there are 28 steps, but we put a lot of effort making sure you knew how to do it. And this PDF is how to do it. So if you're interested in those slides in the training, it is publicly available. Anyone can get at it. You, these steps, even though you have to enroll, there's no like waiting on someone else to say to approve. You just, you get approved immediately. Um, so if you're interested in it and you're willing to go through five to 10 minutes of annoying government clicking, you can get to it. And uh, it's, I think it's, it's worth the five to 10 minutes of, of looking through this 28 steps uh, that we've really gone through every with photos and screenshots, every step, how to get there um, to, to access these. And it's a good resource for these, these three BMP modules. All right, I'm gonna take the third and last break uh, for the PDHs. And this time I'm not gonna give you the answer, but uh, see if you're paying attention. So the, the BMP training modules that ODOT has put up on Ohio Learn's website, how many of them are there? How many BMP training modules did we put up? That on-demand training that I just went into. <coughs> and I'll give you a second to type in whatever number you think. And then I'm going to be done. I think you, I don't think we don't need more than three. So we'll be done with that. All right. The last thing is BMP research. Um, so a lot of this is available on a lot of different websites, but if you want the latest and greatest for Ohio or that are most relevant to what we think, um, a lot of it's up here. Uh, we have it split up into Ohio specific research and national research. And that really is a useful split because then, you know, if you're looking in kind of this big world of national re research, or if you're on Ohio specific resources. So almost all of the Ohio specific research that's up there is from ODOT because we spend a bunch of money on post-instruction BMP research and it's all available. Um, there's that BMP selection tool I talked about earlier, uh, performance on catch basin, manual of temporary erosion control for roadside ditches. So it's not all post-construction BMP. There's some other stuff out there and I'm getting a little bit outside of BMP resources more into just all the resources, but part of size distribution, gross solids, volume reduction BMPs, so I, I want to highlight, I highlighted this one. This is the manual that we did in 2017 of temporary erosion control products for roadside ditches. And I bring this up because I'm sure there's some MS4 representatives on the, on the webinar today. And um, in the current MS4 permit, uh, which was, went live April 1, 2021, there's an MCM6, which is the like housekeep, good housekeeping part of the permit. There's a new requirement in that. Now it's about two years old. It says within two years of the permit date. So April 1, 2021 to April 1, 2023. So by April 1st, 2023, MS4s have to have a process for uh, stabilizing ditches within the MS4 within two to seven days, depending on how far away it is from the stream. So basically every time we do ditching, stabilizing it when it's within the MS4. So that's something that I know a lot of entities don't do. You know, it's something that we've talked about a lot at ODAC. So I'm sure everyone's 100% on being fully compliant with this MS4 permit requirement that's a month and a half away that you've been planning for for the past 22 and a half months. But in case you haven't, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. We have this manual and it's not perfect. It's not a, it's not a, like, a lot of the ditches are different. Ditch, getting grass to grow in ditches is tricky. But you know, the latest and greatest Ohio specific research, um, you know, done by UC is here. It was done in 2017. It's got really good information on what kind of, what kind of um, stabilization you might be looking at, depending on slopes, shear stress, and velocity, some of the information you might have on your ditches. So 
just in case anyone's not fully prepared for April 1, 2023, when they need to be compliant for the MS4 permit, there's a resource here up on our website, the Ohio Stormwater Association's website. This is all available. All the ODOT research is available on DOT's research website too, but that has 150 research documents and it can be kind of hard. So if you're just looking at, you know, <coughs> excuse me, if you're just looking at research that's most relevant to compliance with the CG, with construction general permit or the MS4 permits, the stuff we deal with most in stormwater, that's what we've pulled out and put on the Ohio Stormwater Association research, Ohio research uh, folder. We got this gross solid. So if you're very curious, particle size distribution, gross solids, we, we, ODOT paid for one of the most extensive uh, research projects in the country on, on what's coming off of roadways associated with the, the type of sediments and the type of gross solid leaves, litter, cigarette butts, all that stuff. There's a lot of really good information on there if you're trying to assess how quickly your culverts or your catch basins are clogging up and what, what they're clogging up with. Um, we looked at urban and rural sites. So there, there's a lot of good information in there. If you're, if you're getting into that, if you're getting into storm drain cleaning or, or maintenance, and, and there's a lot, I know there's a lot of people doing work on keeping their storm drains cleaner right now. So a lot of good information on the loading side of that. Uh, our new post-construction BMP. So I, I've given talks on this or we've given talks on this before, but we have this new amended vegetative filter strip. So the interesting part of this, this was done at the end of 2021, but the interesting part of this is that Along with it was a lot of precipitation data, a lot of flow rate data, a lot of data that could be used in ways outside of just for our research. So, you know, we have two and a half, three years of minute precipitation and flow data um, at 10 to 12 sites across Ohio. So if you're curious how much it rained at all in 20, uh, in, you know, 2019, 2020 and 2021, and maybe a little bit of 2018, we have, a lot of precipitation data that's available that you can get access or find access to through that report or by calling me. Um, from a national, and I know we're getting, oh, we're okay on time. From a national research standpoint, there's a ton of good information. There's these comprehensive fact sheets, a lot of information on nutrient removal, metals removal of post-construction BMPs. We've already talked a little bit about that long-term performance and costs and some climate change stuff that's up and coming that's, that's real good. Um, these these um, BMP fact sheets from, these are the four pages of a BMP fact sheet of a dry extent of detention are still the best fact sheets I've seen uh, from anywhere. They're from the, they were done by a research project from a uh, national cooperative or the NCHRP, which is the, basically the research arm of the of federal highways. And, but, and while there, there are some transportation specific things, you know, it gives really quick and easy information in, in four pages, two pages front and back of all the different BMPs and information about where the guidance is and how to inspect and maintain them. So really high level stuff and costs associated with them, you know, all, all this really good information that's available on any post-construction BMP. So any fact sheet in the future should really use this as a starting point because these are really great. Like I said, there's research on nutrient removal up there that... You can look at any one of these post-construction BMPs and these dots mean different things, but see exactly how, how effective they might be at nitrogen, ammonia, total phosphorus, dissolved phosphorus, orthophosphate, you know, the different things from a nutrient standpoint we care about. So, and, and these, you can get into this real high level, like, is it effective or is it not effective? For instance, saying like the only thing that's very good at getting rid of phosphorus is a wet pond from as far as effluent concentrations, or if you want to get into volume reduction and like load in and out, there's really good information there that if I need to look at any of this stuff, these are the places I start and, and I have a pretty good grasp of what's available nationally. Uh, Long-term cost and performance. So, you know, it's got all these BMPs and the specific average costs, it's obviously very site specific, but if you want to get an order of magnitude average cost to treat E. coli or copper, lead, zinc, nitrogen, phosphorus, you know, these are the real costs or sediment um, to uh, remove some of these. So when you're talking about, okay, how much is it going to cost to get rid of dissolved phosphorus with my dry detention basin? About $10,000 a pound or more, potentially, you know, it gives you a, an order of magnitude cost for some of these of what are we talking about here? You know, how possible is this? How much is it to get to knock the TSS down? And how do we compare these 
So, so much has been done and the web, the internet is big and hard to get through. We have made it much smaller if you're looking at post-construction BMPs. This is the, one of the new climate change things. So there's a process and this is for DOTs, but it's completely usable because most of the, a lot of the states use the, just like in Ohio, use the DOTs, IDF curves or intense and duration frequency, basically the design storm curves for sizing of pipes. So this is an example in Philadelphia where that little blue line on the right is the, is the IDF curve or the design storm data based on historical data. And then they applied some assumptions for climate change and have an increased IDF curve to account for the potential impacts of climate change by the year 2100. And there's this process that goes through, which is not easy, but it's, it's doable. You can read this report, follow this process and get to uh, changes in your IDF curves based on climate change if you're looking to go that way. And again, if anyone's doing this, this is where you should start. This is the latest and greatest of, of that type of research. <clears throat> so I'm, I'm wrapping up here my prepared spiel, but there's something for everyone. Again, exclamation point, because we're very excited about post-construction BMPs. There's, if you got new designers or reviewers, start here. There's lots of good stuff to just, I mean, you could literally, if you just hired someone, just let them loose on our website for two days and they'll learn a lot about that. Um, there's MS4 training. Oh, oh yeah, I'm just talking about post-construction BMPs. I didn't get into some of the regular MS4 resources that are available. Um, uh, but, you know, certainly for minimum control measure five and a little bit for four and a little bit for six and a little bit for MCM3. So if you're getting into MS4, someone new to this and want to learn all this stuff that's outside of, again, we don't have too much for public involvement and training um, and education, but that's MCM2 and one and two, but other stuff, we have a lot of information. There's a lot of detailed information for designers. You know, if I'm teaching someone how to do detailed design of a post-construction BMP, I'm using these same resources. Stormwater program managers, those that want to like direct, you know, maintenance efforts or nutrient reduction efforts. It's a lot of good stuff here. And then if you want to go really down the rabbit hole into some of this nutrient or climate change stuff, these are the latest and greatest at our library. Uh, so really a lot of resources should really kind of be your go-to um, for this. If you're interested in looking at this stuff, if you already know this stuff, then it's just comforting to know it's there. But if you're looking to get into this, that's a really good place. Or you could just ask me or Mark McCabe or Kelly or anyone on the association and just say, hey, I'm looking for this. Is this something in your library? You know, we're, we're the Stormwater, Ohio Stormwater Association. And this is really one of our goals is to, to make all of stormwater uh, improvement and compliance um, easier on everyone who attends these webinars and everyone who visits our website. So you can also just reach out to us um, and we can even help you uh, navigate the library, which is way easier to navigate than the internet. Um, but yeah, that, that's the end of my slides. So I don't know if we want to open it up to questions before we do any of the post, uh, post stuff, Kelsey. Yeah, thank you, John. That was a great presentation. No, there's one question here that does say they're curious if ODOT or ODNR have any examples of BMPs they have used to handle bridge runoff to waterways. Yeah, so uh, there are no, yeah, kind of. So there, there are plenty of bridge uh, BMPs, bridge specific BMPs in some of those uh, national research things. So the, the list of BMPs have a lot of things for, for Basically, where the scupper drains are are diverted back to the to the bridge pier and brought down. ODOT has done that. We have that up in District 12. We have bioretention cells that that receive that. Um, if that's what you're talking about, so there are BMPs that exist in the in the field in Ohio that treat bridge runoff, um, and there's a lot of the research that goes into that um, in, on a national level of what's available because it's it's been a big question. Um, so. Yes, that, that some of that is available on through the research of post-construction BMPs and uh, some of it you can just call me about if you're curious what ODOT's done. A question just popped up. Will a copy of today's slides be sent out to attendees? I know we will have this. Uh, we are recording this presentation. It will be on our uh, OSWA's YouTube channel. 
I believe you can view it if you're a member. Uh, but John, do you think we can send out a copy of the slides? Oh yeah, I, I'm I'm a I'm a public servant, right? I work for ODOT. You can have anything I do. I, I can't right. can't keep anything. Um, it looks like there was a question. I have a question about changing the runoff ditch of an Ohio interstate highway. The ditch is an ODOT owned land. The water was cut off from a nearby wetland, and the stormwater needs redirecting. Who is responsible for planning the cost and changing of the ditch if ODOT is there process to request this work? Yeah, that's a big question. Um, uh, we're not supposed to cut off wetlands. So yeah, you'd have to you'd have to start with the district. So whoever submitted that, if it's a if it's a maintenance question or a district question, um, you can talk to me and I can we can talk details. You can give me a call at at that phone number or or email me or the. But I'll, what I will do is reach out to the ODOT district of the specific site and figure out what's going on and if it's a a project or not, and we'll, we'll figure out. There's so many different things it could be. So we just got to get to the details of that for the person who submitted that question. All right, thank you. And OSWA would like to thank our sponsors. We have tier one sponsor, Butler County Swimwater District, tier three sponsors, Contact Engineered Solutions, Strand Associates and Davy Resource Group, and our tier four sponsors, City of Dayton, Rumpke and JEO Consulting Group. And now we would like to highlight our sponsor, Contact Engineered Solutions. We have Dana Heinemann from Contact, uh, she'll speak briefly about content. Thanks everyone. And wrapping up here, uh, great presentation, John. Uh, I definitely learned a lot and hopefully everyone else did too. Um, but we wanna thank Ohio Stormwater Association for allowing us to be a partner. Uh, this year, but uh, if you're familiar with Contact, we are a full site solutions provider uh, covering the uh, Northern America territory, uh, working with stormwater solutions, pipe solutions, as well as structure solutions, um, looking at bioretention, any type of corrugated metal pipe or uh, reline products, as well as our precast um, plate truss and bridges. So we've got a full site of suite of solutions to offer. So definitely check us out. And again, we wanted to thank Ohio Stormwater Association for the time and I'll wrap it up here so everyone else can go to lunch. Thank you, Dana. And thank you, Contact, for sponsoring. OSWA would also like to thank our affiliates for offering our members uh, some discounts to their online trainings. The Stormwater University, National Stormwater Center, and American Stormwater Institute. And OSWA would love to have your support. If you're interested in becoming a sponsor of OSWA, please contact Kelly Kubander or Bob Lentz. Both their emails are listed here. OSWA, we offer four different sponsorship levels, the four different tiers there. So please feel free to reach out if you're interested. Again, joining an OSWA committee, it's a great way to become involved, network, and even just to learn more about OSWA. You do not need to be a member to join a committee. You can contact Kelly Kubander to express any interest or to learn more about our committees. We are currently seeking an industrial committee chair. So if you are interested or know someone who might be interested, please pass this information along. And if you can just reach out to Kelly. Some upcoming events. March 7th is the Environmental Professionals Network Breakfast. Changing rivers, enhancing the natural and social well-being of Ohio alongside more floods and warmer temperatures. There's some great presenters booked for this event. Hope you can make it. April 5th is the Extreme Weather Webinar. May 10th and th through the 12th is the Ohio Stormwater Conference at Kalahari and Sandusky. You can come check out OSWA's booth if, if you're there. July 12th is the OSWA webinar. Topic is still to be determined. And October 5th is the regulatory update webinar. Additional information regarding these events and how to register can be found on our website, ohioswa.com. Again, thank you for joining us today and feel free to reach out with any questions regarding Ohio Stormwater Association. Thank you, John, Melissa, Dana, and contact again. Have a great day. Thanks, everybody.